Hello and welcome to the final uh, news update episode of 2019 on what a year it's been. It's just been another year. You know, stuff happens, other stuff doesn't happen. It'll be fine. So I'm going to start with a couple of stories that caught my eye uh, in the last few weeks uh, and then explain a bit about what's happening in the fully charged universe uh, later on. I'm also going to try and tidy up a few Bobby's boo-boos. I don't think we've really talked about it that much on the Fully Charged show, but on the podcast, there is a sort of a small ongoing theme uh, with a little song, uh, and it's called Bobby's Made a Boo Boo. Time, guilt, time, everyone's got to feel guilty. Oh, yes, Bobby's made a boo boo, and that's all right. There we go. Actually, talking about the podcast, it's just past its millionth download. Isn't that amazing? We only launched it this year. It's had a million downloads already. We're really pleased with how that's going. That's great. So, uh, and well done, to, uh, particularly Ben, who does the, who produces the podcast, because that's, you know, a, a labour of love to get that out. Now, I recently mentioned about cobalt being used in oil refining, which it is, which I didn't know. It's amazing. It's to remove the sulphur from diesel and gasoline slash petrol. That's why it's used. So when you have low sulphur fuels, really a good thing for human beings they use cobalt as the catalyst to remove the uh, the sulfurous products so cobalt the massive majority of it is in uh, is situated in the democratic republic of the congo one of the least democratic least stable countries on the planet absolutely heartbreaking situation there it's, it's, it's quite complicated so there are some families in the congo whose children have suffered terribly badly some died some badly injured in the mining process they shouldn't be working there anyway they should be at school and they're working in mines because they're so poor that they haven't got anything to eat if they don't do it. And they're paid abysmally, abysmally low amounts of money to work there. And so the International Rights Advocates, which is a human rights legal organisation, representing this group of families from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And those people I listed, Apple, Alphabet, Google, Dell, Microsoft, Tesla, in particular, aided and abetted the mines that abused and profited from forcing their plaintiffs, that's the kids, and other children to mine cobalt under conditions that led to their deaths or serious crippling injuries. So, I mean, this stuff is so horrific. It doesn't matter where you stand politically. It doesn't matter what your views on climate change are or on clean technology or electric cars or modern business practices and ethics. It doesn't matter. That is basically wrong. Getting, you know, however it's done, coercing, forcing, bullying, slave driving children to work in a mine is not good. And it doesn't matter what the end result is. But I just want to make it very clear that we are all in some ways culpable for this situation because we all use devices that have cobalt in. That is a really big concern. And I know that, in, for instance, the Tesla battery is about 1% of its mass is cobalt. So it's a very small amount. And they are all working to remove that from it, simply because it's a contentious material. No one wants to have anything to do with it. A, a recent story in Clean Technica has verified this. It underlines how research is coming to fruition, finally, because there's been a lot of money put into this. This is a new, completely new energy storage technology. Although they've announced it, they're remaining very mysterious about it. They're not releasing exactly what it is, but this is what they're saying at the moment. This is the quote from IBM. This is literally this week. Our team at IBM Research has discovered a chemistry for a new battery which does not use heavy metals or other substances with sourcing concerns. The materials for this battery are able to be extracted from seawater. I've heard a lot about this. Laying the groundwork for a less invasive sourcing techniques than current material mining methods. This is the thing you've got to kind of cling on to at the moment, I think. Uh, not in a uh, fuzzy-headed, ah, everything's going to be fine way. You know, I constantly am looking at these problems because they're real. That problem with cobalt is real. And I am very culpable for it. There's two cars with big batteries the other side of that wall and battery packs on the wall of the house that all contain cobalt. And it's, it's dodgy. It's a dodgy material. You could say, you know, kilo for kilo, it's less dodgy than fossil fuels because the history of the fossil fuel industry, particularly in places like Africa, is not exactly benign. I know that, you know, the removal of cobalt from batteries isn't going to solve the horrendous human rights issues and the horrendous inequality in those countries and the corruption and the, you know, it's not going to stop it, but it will at least alleviate it 
you know, to an extent that they'll have to do something else, you know, that the cobalt won't be as needed. And eventually the only way, the only use for cobalt will be in refining fossil fuels. And I don't, certainly don't want to get ranty at this time of year, but there's another story that caught my eye. It's, it's hard. I'm going to hold back the ranting. I'm not going to do it, but it is Shell, Shell Oil, the big oil company, Anglo-Dutch oil company. <sighs> I mean, for balance, Shell are rolling out some amazing touch to pay, easy to use, easy to find rapid chargers all over their refueling network. So wherever there's Shell garages, there are now more and more rapid chargers for electric cars. Shell are doing that, so are BP. Because Shell paid zero tax in 2018, not a penny. And yet they made a pre-tax profit of £731 million. That's in this country. That's not around the world, just here. £731 million didn't pay one dime. So they get massive tax refunds for dismantling their own equipment in the North Sea. The Brent oil field in the North Sea is being dismantled, it's run out. And now they want help removing the massive oil rigs. They've got to be towed back to land, dismantled, you know, with the metal reused and all that stuff. It's a huge operation, which we, the poor, hard-working taxpayers of this beleaguered country are paying for. We're paying Shell to uh, dismantle their own equipment. Uh, interestingly, no one seems to be droning on anymore about how uh, renewables need subsidies. I always used to hear that. Well, your renewables can't make their own way because they have to be subsidised. And early on, it was very true. They were, there were lots of tax breaks and subsidies for things like solar farms, for big wind farms, for big wind turbines. That's no longer the case. There's zero subsidies now. For two reasons, the current government doesn't want to give them to, and also they don't need them anymore. They, they, they are economically self-sustaining. You know, there's a massively expensive investment to put those wind turbines out in the North Sea or wherever they are, the, the Liverpool Bay, all the places they're putting them out there, but they can actually make money out of them in a purely commercial basis. And they still, even doing that, they are still the cheapest way of generating electricity pretty much in the world. I mean, it's, it's, that's what's extraordinary about it. So the only people who need for, uh, subsidies now is the fossil fuel industry, which they get, I mean, there's plenty of reports about it. It's in the trillions globally of, of tax subsidies. So taxpayers pay tax and that money is used to subsidise massive fossil fuel companies. Anyway, hey, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And all. I don't want to drone on too much about that. There's a little report coming up in a moment about the latest version three Tesla superchargers. So fast, so fast. They are amazing. Um, very easy to use, uh, and if you're a Tesla owner, it's Model 3. They only work on the Model 3 at the moment. CCS. I'll, 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 it's all explained in a minute. But before I go, there's another couple of uh, Bobby's boo-boos I've got to make. One of them, which is very critical. Some of you eagle-eyed may have spotted this. Oh, yes. This is so... It's, so, it's heavy. It's got a bit of weight to it. This is the fully charged guide to electric vehicles and clean energy. Now, I have stated on many occasions that this will be available to people who've supported it on Unbound, which is the crowdfunded publisher that produced it, by Christmas. <clears throat> so a lot of things happened. We had to, a lot of editing and a lot of... I mean, it's gorgeous. It's full of amazing stuff. It is really dense. So I feel bad that you're not going to get it before Christmas. You're going to get it in the first couple of weeks of January. I feel really bad about that because I promised it. So that's my boo-boo. No one else had promised it, just me. Uh, when Unbound told me that they just couldn't get them get it through the printers, you have to book like so far in advance. If you ever get in, a, if you ever have an uncle, it would have been a great thing to have at Christmas because you have your annoying uncle <laughs> over, or your dad, or your mum, or someone who's going on about electric cars, and just basically they don't know. They don't know much. It's all in here. So next year, it's going to make a great Christmas present for Christmas 2020. So I'm really sorry about that. I feel very bad. I should have said this isn't going to come out. I was like this because it was only in the last... So literally, this arrived this morning in my house. Uh, so there we go. It is really good. Well, if you've ordered it, um, you'll get it very soon. And if you haven't ordered it, but you'd like one, if you order it now, the links are beneath this video, you can get it very soon. So there's that. Now, the other thing I should explain is that for the last few weeks, I've been doing my other job, which I don't do very often, which is uh, Red Dwarf. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Red Dwarf, there's no reason you should from other, uh, uh, other countries. Red Dwarf is a long running comedy series. When I say long running, 32 years we've been making Red Dwarf um, on and off, not every day. That would be very difficult. Uh, it's a, a science fiction comedy show. I started on 
on the BBC, effectively still on, it's on the BBC's commercial arm now. Uh, and we've been filming that and the schedule for that got a bit bashed out of whack, which often happens, very complicated show to make. Um, and that has really thrown not only the Red Dwarf schedule, but the fully charged schedule into a bit of a tailspin. A lot of the things that we planned to shoot before Christmas we haven't been able to do. Uh, that's why I'm doing this very un-Christmassy <laughs> Christmas special. This is about this is a Christmas unspecial. I think it's fair to say. Um, so I want to apologise, and I also want to thank the fully charged production team for sticking with it and ploughing on through. We had a lot of episodes recorded, so they the last few weeks they have been producing two episodes a week, very very consistently. It's absolutely amazing work they've been doing. Uh, they've been working very hard. I also want to thank the amazing team behind the live shows. So the two live shows we're doing next year, we've gone on about them a lot, but I'll just mention them quickly. Austin, Texas, 1st and 2nd of February, and at Farnborough here in England on the 2nd and 3rd of May. They're both going to be spectacular. I'm now actually really excited about both of them. I know uh, Farnborough is going to be absolutely huge. And I know it's further south, but we're already looking at venues in the north of England because we want to do two. So now, as you can imagine, everyone is a little bit knackered. And we've had a very, very busy 2019. It has been intensely busy. We've kind of almost taken on more than we should with the live shows, the book, and producing these shows all the time and trying to finance the company and keep it going so we can carry on going. But we're doing really well. We're massively grateful to Patreon supporters. We're massively grateful to all you regular viewers. But we are going to have a couple of weeks off now over Christmas uh, just to have a little breather. We've got amazing shows already filmed and being edited now that will go out early next year. A lot of stuff we're doing with Maddie Moat, which is brilliant. So that's it. 10 years. Next year will be 10 years that uh, I've been making full, fully charged, which is insane. So I'm going to do a bit of, you know, looking back at that 10 years because it, it has changed amazingly. Anyway, here's what happened a couple of days ago when I went to the new Tesla supercharger array in West London. So I've come down to the Tesla uh, showroom and service centre in uh, West London, in Acton in West London, and they've just installed something that is rather exciting for Tesla owners. And normally I try and avoid being a Tesla fanboy, but that's gone today. I am a massive Tesla fanboy today because what they're doing is extraordinary. These are some exceptionally fast chargers. I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute because what Tesla had to do to make this possible is quite impressive. What I'm walking along is a trench it's been filled in and covered up, not in the trench. They had to trench in a cable that goes to this green box. This massive green box is literally a switch. It's nothing else. It doesn't do anything else. It's just a switch. It's like a switch on your wall, only massive, because the wires that are underneath the ground here are carrying 11 kilovolts. What's 11 kilovolts? Well, the UK grid runs on 240 volts when you plug your, 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 your um, kettle in in the kitchen. That's 240 volts. 11 kilovolts is 11,000 volts. That's what goes in there. That's got a big switch, which is all to do with the safety. Behind this fence here is the transformer. So that steps down this enormous amount of power that's going in here. And where this power is coming from is just over there, which is the uh, London Underground, because they have a lot of electricity for trains. So they managed to take a, a spur off the London Underground electricity feed. <laughs> that goes in the green switch, meter, transformer. People who've used superchargers, Tesla superchargers before, even if you've seen them at motorways, will, will have possibly noticed these boxes. They're always at the supercharger stations. And what they do, they, they supply the power to two of the stalls. So each one does two. So two, four, six, eight. They've got eight stalls here that supply 150 kilowatts. But if you're on one of those stations and you've plugged your car in, you can get 150 kilowatts. If someone parks in next to you and starts using that, your power will drop because they have to share the power. These are the new supercharger backup boxes. These are for 250 kilowatts. And if you're in this slot here and you've plugged your car and you're getting 250 kilowatts and someone comes into the next one and plugs in, they will get 250 kilowatts as well. They don't share the power like that. They don't have to. They're beefy enough to supply 250 kilowatts to each of the chargers. So each of these boxes does four superchargers so that's eight superchargers which are along here that do 250. 
250 kilowatts. That is fast. That's adding over a thousand miles range in an hour of charging. And when you think that the batteries have about 250 to 300 miles range, you can work out. It's pretty quick. Up to is a very important point because it's absolutely dependent on the state of the battery. If the battery is three quarters full, you won't get anywhere near that. If the battery isn't preconditioned to accept the charge, which Teslas do as you drive towards a supercharger, then it won't go that fast. As we will see in a moment, it is absolutely extraordinary if the car is in the absolute optimum uh, position for that. So as fairly empty battery and preheated uh, by the Tesla supercharger preheat system. If you put, basically, if you put a supercharger in as a destination, the car will automatically preheat the battery before you get there so that it can take the maximum amount of juice. So that is hard not to be impressed with what Tesla are doing. These are going to be rolling out all over Europe. This is the first one the first one outside the United States. Uh, it's open today and uh, it's open to use from now on for Tesla drivers. It's very hard not to be a Tesla fanboy when you see something like this, even on a noisy, cold, wet December day in West London. Oh, here we go. Oh my God. Okay, so now it's, we're counting up. The, so this is the kilowatts here. 43, 49. It's, it's, even that is different to how I'm used to it. It's now it's 70, it's 80, 89 kilowatts, 100, 110. And you can see how many miles range an hour will, are added to the battery at this rate. So it's now at 185, 189, 190, 200. I've never seen this before. 207, 220, 230. Oh my Lord. 244, 246, 248, 240, 250, 251. <laughs> So as you can see now, this is adding 1,022 miles range in one hour of charging. Fantastic. I love it. I'm a Tesla fanboy. OK, that's all. I really hope you've enjoyed the shows we've produced this year. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas uh, and a very happy new year. And we'll see you in 2020. And as always, if you have been, Thank you for watching in 2019.